Uh, would you please introduce yourself? Yeah, Karen Boland, New South Wales Children's Guardian. The Royal Commission has considered a number of case studies that provides information regarding the oversight mechanisms for out-of-home care and has identified gaps in these systems. How do these oversight mechanisms work together and how has New South Wales addressed these gaps? I think it's fair to say that New South Wales probably has one of the most comprehensive safety nets in place to protect children, and in particular in out-of-home care. And there's a number of um, pieces of legislation that are administered by various um, organisations, myself being one, the Ombuds being, being another, um, and uh, Family and Community Services being another. Um, we've seen a couple of cases in the Royal Commission um, that have been on point uh, for us. One is the Larkins matter and the second one is the Lord case study. Um, what, what we've responded to is to, in fact, bring some of those regulatory apparatus together so that we get efficiencies. Um, not only efficiencies, but we also get some really effective compliance and monitoring. So in 2013, apart from the Children's Guardian having the responsibility for out-of-home care standards, i.e. how is an organisation travelling in relation to set standards in the legislation, um, we also um, were given the uh, working with Children Check and a responsibility to look at child safe organisations. So you can see that the synergy between standards, child safe organisations um, and regulatory tools like the Working with Children Check um, provide um, a comprehensive framework for the out-of-home care sector. In addition, um, there were closer links uh, via the Working with Children Check uh, with the Ombudsman's Office. And the Ombudsman's Office now has the uh, regulatory capacity to notify us of matters of concern and also uses the rest of the regulatory framework available, um, Chapter 16A, etc. So if you look at that, um, we have um, an incredibly um, data-rich source of information and we have some very um, significant tools in which to assess individuals um, and their capacity to work in organisations um, and we also have a very comprehensive system uh, that operates in relation to assessing organisations um, against the New South Wales out of home care standards. What distinguishes us from other states uh, is that uh, accreditation operates as a quality system in other words, you need to provide a quality service against the standards, um, but you also uh, need accreditation to gain funding from the government. So without accreditation, you can't have a contract. No accreditation, no contract. I think the other thing that we're doing um, at the moment is that um, over the last uh, 18 months or so, we've been um, working with the sector, working with the government um, on establishing a carers register. Um, our focus has been on making um, organisations child focused and child safe. So we need to understand how they wrap their systems around children in order to make their journey in out of home care safe. But we also need to understand um, the qualifications if you like or that the carers um, that we are putting um, children with are also um, safe. Um, so we've established a carers register which is fundamentally um, a tool which will enable organisations to exchange information so that what we're closing a gap there, we're closing the gap um, that um, authorised carers can't just leave one organisation, for example if they're being investigated and move to another one there is a regulatory safety net there where there's, a, if you like, a, a cross-check available. Thank you. What would you see as a critical incident? What is your response when a critical incident occurs in an organisation? I think there's no list of critical incidences and we don't use one definition of a critical incident. Um, every organisation is different um, each organisation has its own characteristics and culture. Um, for some organisations things will be critical events and for others they will just be normal course um, of operational duties if you like. 
So I, th I think what's important for us though is that we have systems to detect when incidents happen or events which are of concern to us, um, the kinds of events that would, if you like, affect their accreditation, um, suggest to us that perhaps the systems weren't operating in the most effective fashion um, and those kinds of things uh, really come down to a broad spectrum. So to start with the top of the organisation we'd say that um, child safe organisations have robust governance structures. So they have stable boards, they have people on boards who understand the business, um, they're in a position to be able to answer the questions, there's, strong, uh, there's a strong chair and leadership. Um, um, issues that come up for consideration by the board um, are looked at um, in a robust fashion, there's debate around the table and the chair has a mechanism to resolve those debates and come to a decision. So that's at the very top of the organisation um, and so we do look at um, how the board operates, we do look at their minutes and their operations, we do look at the qualifications that board members have, um, we do get an understanding when there's critical changes there that that has a critical impact on an organisation. So we would um, go into an organisation when there's been some disruption to the governance, some disputes on boards that remain unresolved. Um, some issue with the chair, um, you know, changing chairs are always indicative to us that an organisation at its basic level um, might have systems in place that have a downstream um, that will affect practice. So we'll look at things like that. Principal officers in every organisation, there needs to be a nominated principal officer who is, if you like, in charge of, of home care. And so some of the critical incidences that we've had in relation to those um, is, if you like, a revolving door um, of principal officers, um, people who come in, um, have mixed roles, um, cannot distinguish between their role as a principal officer and their role perhaps as a foster carer, whether it would be with that agency or other agency. So we've put in place a number of, um, I suppose, rules and guidance in relation to principal officers. And I suppose the most recent one is where a principal officer doesn't get a working with children check. That's obviously a critical event um, and we need to go in um, and manage that um, and have a look at how it operates in the system. Um, and of course that was something that um, arose in the Larkins matter and we have a number of safeguards in place that have resolved some of the issues um, in relation to Larkins. So for example, uh, now um, the board is responsible for um, understanding and verifying um, a principal officer or if, if that principal officer reports directly to the board or the CEO, if they're separate from the principal officer, has a responsibility to ensure that a person has a working with children check that's cleared. Another event in an organisation might be just um, you know, indus industrial disruption, um, it might be a particular um, event uh, that's happened in a particular part of an organisation, so it might be um, a disruption that might not be necessarily child related but might be something like fraud um, or it might be child related where there's been a practice issue um, at the worst end of that spectrum, child death, um, but we also look way before that um, and look at critical events where there's near, if you like, um, near deaths um, or uh, injuries to children, uh, runaway children, um, those kinds of things. The thing that we're most concerned with um, is that organisations have systems in place um, to understand what due diligence is. Um, so for example in the transition, uh, you know, a, a critical event is when you take on uh, double your workload. So. In the transition we've seen organisations take on more work. Have they done their due diligence in understanding how that work will be done in their organisation um, and how that will throw through uh, to practice, have an impact on their standards or whether they're meeting standards or not meeting standards and what systems are in place to make sure that children um, are well cared for and that they're at the centre of practice. And if there are organisations that have a multiplicity of businesses, um, where does out-of-home care fit um, in that system? It's almost easier if they're just an out-of-home care agency, but most of what we've seen is a diversification, um, out-of-home care being part of that diversification in the last transition. So we'd see all of those things as critical risks. Um, the legislation 
underpins that. We've got compliance programs, audit systems. We have reporting systems to tell us about um, critical incidences, as I've just described them. I think the most important thing for us is that we have um, an incredible presence in agencies. So we don't rely upon there being uh, just uh, I suppose clear guidelines or checklists or whatever else that we develop or clear policies. Um, all of those things are incredibly important but they won't actually tell you how an agency is going. You actually have to be out in the agency understanding how they operate, assessing how they operate against the standards, have a good working understanding and be present. So I'd say presence um, is a very, very critical issue in keeping kids safe and practice child-centred. And we've seen lots of that talk in um, family and community services about home visits and so forth. It's just underline, uh, you can't do this work remotely from a desk. You have to actually be in the agencies, you actually have to understand what's going on. Do standards reduce critical incidents? I think what standards do is provide a framework and a system um, for people to work within um, and there are a number of prerequisites to provide quality care for children and standards is one of them. Um, and you have to say if you've got robust systems then you have the best opportunity to identify potential risks, manage those risks either proactively um, or understand their risks that will happen no matter how robust your system are, systems are and do, then do you have a system that deals with that concisely and efficiently and quickly and what are the characteristics of that system to manage that cr uh, critical incident. So what we look at in relation to the standards is exactly that. Do you have a system in place that identifies risks and you can manage those risks? Um, and when something happens, do your systems respond appropriately? And then do you have a, if you like, a learning loop uh, that goes back into the organisation and says, okay, so this has happened, um, now we've learnt from that, let's improve our system. So it's a continuous improvement, I suppose, to use an old-fashioned term, uh, system. Um, it's also in relation to um, you know, what changes are on the horizon, so the standards will reflect changes. Um, they are there to underpin the government's policy objectives, so at the moment we're seeing um, the government um, with policy objectives about a, um, a permanency hierarchy, um, with adoption being within that mix. We've traditionally operated separate standards between out-of-home care and adoption. We're in the process of amalgamating those standards, making them more streamlined so that they don't become, if you like, um, just extra red tape, that they become meaningful for organisations and that people um, within those organisations have a capability um, of ensuring that their operations change and move with these policy uh, shifts um, and the future um, look of the out-of-home care system. So um, in that sense, um, the standards perform, if you like, uh, the underpinning of how we do our work. Um, apart from the standards, we have um, we administer the Working with Children Check um, and the Working with Children Check is um, one tool um, that will tell you about a worker. It's not the only tool. And I think what we also look at is um, when we've had critical incidences in relation to inappropriate people making their way into out-of-home care agencies, we've seen that, yes, the check will tell you some things. Uh, it will tell you about a person's past behaviour, but if they don't have a history of past behaviour, then you need to have other systems in place um, that will be um, preventative, that will assist you in avoiding critical incidences. So we've seen in the um, Larkins and the Lord matters um, that you really need to have in place some good systems in between your organisation and the board. Uh, you need to also have in place some really robust um, recruitment processes. And when I say robust, um, I don't mean uh, ones that are written down in a very comprehensive fashion. Um, what we say in the Children's Guardian is often you'll have things articulated um, to a minor um, 
to a minor level um, and in that trying to tick all the boxes you lose sight of what you're actually doing you lose sight of what's good practice so for example you have good robust selection criteria you check referees you ask the right questions of referees you just don't ring up and say do you know this person are they a good person you actually make inquiries if the person's worked overseas it's really 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 important um, that you make the effort to talk to um, employers who've been overseas we've seen recently a number of people who've returned um, to Australia who have um, if you like um, relevant behavior overseas that would have been com absolutely essential for an employer to know and would have influenced their decision differently so I refer in particular to the Lord matter um, and really encourage people to have a look at the Royal Commission website and have a look at the transcripts there um, and have a look at the need for um, robust uh, probity systems um, both for their uh, employees um, but also for their authorised carers. Is that enough? And lastly, what are the important take-home messages for <coughs> agencies? Look, I'll just re-emphasise some of the things that I've talked about um, and that the first one is accreditation, meeting the out-of-home care standards in New South Wales. Um, it's not a point in time process. You don't do it and then, you know, wipe your hands and say, OK, well, we'll just wait till the Children's Guardian comes back in five years' time. Um, this is an ongoing process. When we come and look at your organisation, we're not prescriptive. We don't come in and say you have to do it this way. Uh, what we do say is that you have to meet the standards. Show us how you do your work and then our, our job is to look at that work and assess whether it meets the standards. So we assume that you've got systems in place for ongoing review, critical incidences as a key part of reviewing your organisation and how it's operating. We assume that. We assume you've got a commitment to quality. We assume that you've set yourself up to look after um, kids in care and therefore you do have a commitment to quality and you have a commitment that will see yourself continuously reviewing. Now we've got a couple of mechanisms in place that we can go in and just make sure that you're ticking over okay and we do some audits um, and we also go out when there's critical incidences um, as I've defined before and have another look at agencies and see how they're travelling and then we have a reaccreditation process and I'd have to say that it's incredibly important that people understand that accreditation um, is not only about keeping kids safe um, but ultimately it's about whether you're in the business or not you know no accreditation no contract so there's no room for complacency so that's the first thing and I suppose you know we we always talk about um, it's not the end game this is not a you know I'll be perfect there'll be a nirvana point um, everything will be perfect um, and as I've said before key message is we look at your systems how robust they are we come in when an incident happens and we look about how you manage that incident not that you had the incident so again um, with our working with children check um, environment I suppose um, the key message there is working with children check um, is one tool um, it will tell you one thing it won't tell you everything um, and that you really need to have effective and robust processes in place uh, for recruiting staff, for supervising staff, for assessing your carers and most importantly uh, you need to be out there you know, in the field, on the ground as they say um, and really understanding what's happening and our test really there is when we come into an agency do you know what's happening to the children? You know, where in the agency is there a collective understanding about what's happening to particular children? You know, it's not just do you know their names, um, but do you know that they're okay, they're travelling okay? You know, what, what are the systems you've got in place for knowing that? Um, and where's the evidence that you know that? Um, so if you're sitting around a table with people, um, caseworkers, casework managers, um, us, um, you know, members of the board, um, sometimes foster parents, um, sometimes uh, children, uh, then you will 
get a very good sense about how an organisation is operating um, if they can sit around a table and have a dialogue about what's happening with each individual child. If they're picking up their bits of paper and rushing off to find another bit of information or saying, well, I don't know that because, you know, so-and-so was sick and, you know, those kinds of things, um, then we get a bit more rigorous um, in how we operate. So I think one of the things that we've learnt a lot from the Working with Children Check um, and we've learnt from the Royal Commission, again, it's a kind of a continuous learning if you like, um, is that uh, a child safe organisation um, is characterised by transparency and it's one where children are at the centre of that, where children's concerns are at the centre and that children's concerns are always taken seriously and that there is no hesitation in an agency um, about dealing with that concern. Uh, you don't filter it out by saying, oh, that's a kid's view, or that child's troublesome, um, they're making that up. You don't do that. That's not a characteristic of a child safe organisation. You have a conversation with the child, you have a conversation if there's other issues. You work through those things at that, if you like, preventative level. And then if there is something of significance, then the system does come in um, and underpin um, a range of systems. Um, a reportable conduct's one, um, reporting to us is another, um, looking at us in terms of out-of-home care is another. So, um, But without that uh, transparency, without that clear and fearless leadership about open discussion um, and taking very seriously children's concerns, um, all of the safety net in the world and all of the systems that operate after though are secondary to that absolute centrality of that kind of culture in an organisation. Thank you Karen, that was excellent.